All right, it is recording. All of my cake and conversations start the same way. So make sure it's actually recording. So hi, everyone. Welcome to another Cake and Conversation. I'm Kristen, one of the librarians here at the Paul Pratt Library. I'm actually in the library right now. And I'm really excited to have my special guest today, Don Royne. How are you? Great, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Don is a name that I have heard for years and years bandied about town. Um, you've been in town forever, right? Or it seems like it. Yeah, it does seem like it sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but um, Don is officially the program director at Cohasset 143 TV. And so if you have kids in the school systems, you'll see him recording games um, or town meeting or just kind of a little bit of everything. So I thought it would be really fun to have him here. I'm very curious about Cohasset 143 TV. Um, and I thought I would just pepper him with questions and have him tell me what it's all about. So sure. welcome. Thank you so much. So let's start with the obvious. What is Cohasset 143 TV? Okay, officially we're Cohasset Community TV, right. CCTV, um, AKA 143 TV. Uh, because we're located at 143 Pond Street, we have the affiliation of 143 with the lighthouse uh, there's nothing else we could have named ourselves. So um, that is, uh, is the logical explanation for that. But basically, we're a, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, um, an access television corporation. There's 312 of us in Massachusetts. And uh, we get our funding through the cable providers. So in our case, it's Comcast and Verizon. Okay. You look at the back of the bill you'll see that 5% goes towards us. So we're not funded by the schools, we're not funded by the town, um, we're funded by the cable subscribers. So this is officially your cable station. You know, you, you pay for it and uh, it becomes a part of you. So we're all- So if you're not, a, if, if you're off the grid, can you not access? Well, no, that's not true because you show programs online, right? That's right. We do that after the fact. So okay. we we have an obligation to run um, television programs on the station itself because they provide the space for us. And we have some changes coming along and, and this is a perfect opportunity. So Verizon is changing, well, they've already changed. Uh, the school channel was channel 36. That's becoming channel 42. Mm government public channel, which we share. Um, so if you understand PEG, P-E-G, stands for public education government. Um, so we're a PEG access sta station. We cover all three channels. Um, so because we're a small town, we share government public. So Verizon was channel 37. And as of this morning, oh. while I was scrambling to get over here, we had to uh, officially change our, our, our station ID. So huh. now we're channel 43 for our public government. Do you get the channel 43? Uh, so they were part of 143? Yeah. Oh, cute. And, and so that gives us the option in the near future to change to a high def channel, which will be 143. However, it has to be a two in front of it. Uh, so. We will be two one four three in the future. Oh, okay. And the cat out of the bag. You know, I know a lot of people were trying to market this properly, but I know if people are ch switching channels, uh, they don't really know where to find us. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Yeah. So Verizon has put out a notification uh, thirty three days ago to all the Verizon subscribers that they were making this change. So we'll be doing this on Facebook as well. Um, okay on our bulletin board, but of course people won't know to look for a different channel on our bulletin board. So we hope the public, uh, they inform their neighbors and- you know. Now I have Comcast and I just have always gone to channel nine. Right, that'll stay the same. That'll stay, okay. 
Yeah, we're, we're trying to get that upgraded, but the, the Comcast, uh, their infrastructure isn't set up yet for HD for our town. Um, so we have, they have an obligation to do this for free uh, in, within four years. Now it's within three years because we a new contract last year. So um, we're hoping to push them along uh, because we'd love to make our changes all within like, the same year. Mm -hmm. All of our subscribers are going to get a very vastly improved television signal. And you know, so we're excited for it. I, I, nobody wants to see me on HD, so <laughs> I've got to fix the radio, as they say. Yeah, that. There's something to be said about the fuzziness, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's the gauze effect. Now, how long have you been involved with the cable? Oh, uh, boy. It's, uh, right out of school, uh, I went to film and photojournalism in school. And uh, as a 21 year old, I landed a job at the Plymouth Carver Intermediate School uh, as their media technician. As I found out, I became the media manager in the first year. So I was hired in July and uh, I found a bunch of boxes that were loaded up in the studio and wires everywhere. So I was tasked with building a TV studio and a phone lab and outfitting a video and projection for a planetarium in two months. Oh, wow. So I ended up taking a night course at Wentworth as video engineering because I was like way over my head. Um, I was with film where they're like cutting film in half. And <laughs> so now I'm into a new technology and wow. wasn't really prepared. But um, come September 2nd, which was on my birthday, we uh, didn't everybody remember that. So you. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Yep. Next send year. Send me some cake. Yep. Uh, yeah, so, I owe you uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I brought a sandwich, but I didn't bring any cake. I was <laughs> um, but anyway, we, we were fully operational on September 2nd. We had a full classroom of junior high students coming in. And uh, we actually produced a program of welcome to the studio. Uh, for mm. our, and that was before cable. So um, we had an inter-school connection. So every school had their own. TV set and their own cable connections. And maybe it wasn't a good show, but we did go live. That's great though. That was my first exposure to them. Then, um, then I went on to, you know, we did a, a I don't know if, how many people remember a company called Preview or Stars. Yep. It was over the air antenna that you got one channel. That was a predecessor for uh, cable. So about two years I did that and then cable came along and I, fell into a job in Hanover, Norwell, and I was the program director there uh, for like five, six years. For the towns? Uh, for the, for towns, the towns, yep. So that was actually run by Comcast. So I, I'll explain that later. Uh, we, it was Continental Cable Vision, mm -hmm. and, uh, different iterations. We be, finally became Comcast. So I never really changed positions. I was still the same person. <sighs> facility, same group of volunteers. And uh, so at that time, the cable providers paid for program director, all the studios, all the equipment, uh, salaries. Really? Parents. And eventually they started to scrap that. And now it's every single town in Massachusetts no longer is um, you know, beholden to the cable companies except for funding. Uh, we, we provide our own uh, equipment, our own technology, uh, our own systems, everything that we, our own purchases, hires, everything that we do, um, we do on our own. Hmm. And how long have you been to, in Cohasset? I've been here, this is, uh, we're entering our 10th year. 10, okay. Yeah, okay. so uh, I started in 2012, um, and then we were officially operating three weeks after my hire. Now, I know it's out of sequence, but you asked me what, what are the funny things that we... Yeah, what, yeah, if you have any stories, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, one scene. of the stories is uh, we, uh, we went live with a hearing that was, um, I'm sure everybody remembered it in uh, late February, the selectmen met uh, with a controversy over the chief of police, and they met right here in the library. 
Well, we didn't have a live feed to the library. We didn't even have the equipment for it. We had cameras, we didn't have cables. So we went to adjoining towns to Hull and Hingham and we borrowed equipment, we borrowed fittings. My wife, we, we made her a, a, one of our technicians and she ran around uh, one minute before we were, the meeting started, we went live. Oh my God. We were told by the, by the, 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 the town selectmen, they came right into the studio and said, we have no audio. You know, people are saying, so, oh yeah, so we had to turn the audio up. Oh, wow. So within three minutes, we were fully functioning. Uh, the funny thing is we recorded in a raw file, not knowing what we were doing. And the, the four hour meeting was 411 gigabytes. So that took up, we only had a 500 gigabyte server. Holy cow, really? Yeah, so we had no way of editing it. So then we had to go online and figure out a way that we could shrink that file because oh. none of the software would accept a file that large. Um, so by the following day, we were able to shrink it down to a reasonable side and we played it back for the audience that couldn't watch it live. And we were great we couldn't watch it live because it was a mess. Oh my God. And so like, where is something like that? Do you have archives? We do. Yeah. So we have, um, I, I'm trying to, we have uh, 36 terabytes of backup files. Mm -hmm. Some of our files go on the cloud and mm -hmm. we put online. So all of the school committee, selectmen, planning boards, they go on the town site after mm -hmm. we so we have archives almost everywhere. It's, they're, they're like tentacles reaching out. If, um, if I had a laptop, I'd turn it around. You could see I've got uh, eight terabytes of, of storage within really? my, I could replug them in and, and find things that, that, are, that are archived. We've so if somebody say, you know, wanted to see something that you recorded, maybe a program six years ago, they could do that and you would make arrangements for them. That's right. Send That's right. Um, generally for town functions, we, we provide that for, you know, town government for school committees. If mm -hmm. it's, we've had uh, like attorneys asking for information, we charge them for it. It's the same as in the past, we would make a DVD and mail it to them when we charge them the 25. Mm. So, it, it is time consuming. We, we have to load the file um, into a system. We put it into Google Drive or sometimes they don't have, they can't receive it because their, their computers, uh, their, their systems won't allow files like that. So we have to send a thumb drive. Or, mm, oh, really? We, we do that. And, you know, generally if, if you, for instance, were looking for a program for six years ago, yeah. send it to you via Google Drive and no charge. We're happy to we're happy to do it. You just have to give me a cake or something. Because I remember when I first, well, I, I I don't even know how long before I had kids, so more than twenty five years ago, they used to have like the kindergarten class. I think here at Osgood would always have a Christmas program that would show right. on cable, and that was always cute. And I thought, gosh, if I was a parent, that would be sort of a fun. Or you know, maybe their 20th college reunion or high school reunion might be fun to dig something like that up. Yeah, sadly, um, most of that stuff was recorded on tape mm. when, when, the, um, when the provider was Comcast. So there were different programs. Many of the files, the video files, ended up at the uh, town library in the basement in three quarter inch or half inch tapes. Um, we've been converting some of those that, that we thought were very, um, that would fit today's time. Mm -hmm. Over probably 200 tapes that haven't even been converted yet. Um, so if you were interested in something, you, you could always go over to the, now it's the Historical Society. Yeah. And, and go through the basement and, and look at the labels. And oh, see. interesting. I bet that's a fun basement to go through anyway. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> a lot of treasures. Yeah, we so found. I don't know if everybody knows that um, 
143 Pond Street is actually the middle high school. That's and right. so that's where your studio is. That's right. We're right in the middle of the library, which is now the learning common. Oh. And so we have classes come in at least once a week. Uh, the, uh, the video teacher, Adam Sasso, was also a graduate of Cohasset High School. Yep, Mr. Sasso. And, yep. and uh, so he brings a class. We have to, we, at, last year we had like 18 kids in the studio at one time. Now we limit it to four, two in the control room, two in the studio. Mm -hmm. And we're producing a news show and they've revitalized um, CSPN, Cohasset Sports News Network. Oh, good. And that's something that we started in our first year, 2012 to 2015, with students. And uh, you talk about funny stories. These kids would come in, and all they did was like insult each other. <laughs> Great insults. And I'd be trying to get their attention, like, we're going on the air in, in five minutes. And they, would, they wouldn't stop. If they saw something that said paddle mic, which is you know something you can talk to the people in the studio, they yeah. no, you're a paddle mic. <laughs> Weird. And uh, so I'd start the countdown: five, four, three, and suddenly they'd all be in their positions. They would very like, professional news anchors. It's like oh, no. they were awesome. And now we have the great. Oh, so you're restarting all that. That's fabulous. Yeah, we have political society, uh, which is they stopped because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. They'll be starting up once again. I guess they're doing some Zoom uh, political society uh, programs, but they're the same way. They're very focused. Once the, the countdown starts, they're in place. Then, you know, it just does my heart wonders to watch these kids. Uh, yeah, yeah. And what about adults? If adults have, um, you know, program ideas or anything, how, how do they go about getting things put together I'm, and aired? I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. So we've had shows in the past. Our Town was one. Um, Diane, I mean, uh, Karen Golden Arante produced her own show, uh, Living Histories, uh, interviewing mm -hmm. who lived and grew up in Cohasset. Um, so now we have uh, the Cohasset Open Artist Group. Oh! Yeah, so they're producing their own show, uh, two of them, uh, two separate shows. One is Zoom, very similar to what you're doing right now. Another one is we provide the camera, the training for one individual. Uh, in this case, it's, it's Margot Shield. She's um, the camera person, and she goes to the different artist studios, so we don't have a large group, interviews the artist. She sends that video to me and to uh, Ginger Jensen, who has learned to edit virtually via, uh, we do it online with her. So we create a, a Zoom conference with her. She ha has a Mac with iMovie, which I don't do anything. Mm. Um, so we go, I have independent study students, uh, one has a Mac, so she will teach online how to edit, and it's like, it's a miracle. It's a miracle really? that I have a junior in high school teach a senior senior um, yeah. with very limited editing skills how to put together a show. So they put together three artists at a time for a half hour program. Um, they send me the finished product. I just balance out the audio and add a title or two to it and we put it on the air. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for adults who are interested in producing their own programs. Um, we don't do the shows for them. You know, mm -hmm. We do hand holding and that's, that comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. But we really want them to be interested and to learn and then they become peers in teaching uh, so we can grow uh, that way. And people are more familiar with friends or, 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 or family members uh, that they can sit down with for several hours and teach them a, a new skill. Yeah. So we love it. Yeah. Uh, and where do you find your TV schedule? Is that online? That's online. So if you go to 143tv.org, um, schedule, a backslash schedule. Okay. You know, we usually uh, put our program schedule like three days completely in advance. 
Uh, but now we have sports and playoffs. So we leave uh, placeholders that just say like Cohasset sports. Mm. It's not really there until we, we populate it. But, um, but we have the time slots. We have um, time slots for uh, the Council on Eight, uh, the Cohasset Elder Affairs has mm. productions in their own programs. So we have slots for them. We have slots for the St. Stephen's Together Again services. Um, that's produced by a former student, uh, Jason Conforti. Mm -hmm. He sends us the videos. Oh, we love first. Jason. He was He's um, wonderful. He worked for us for a while, a couple of years. Yeah. yeah, he was great. Yeah, he, he, you'll be reading about him like at the Ken's, Ken Burns of the future. Yeah, yeah, he is. He so, does great videos. He does. The one he did, I showed, I had... Um, uh, the Veterans Affairs Officer here, and I showed the uh, Vietnam Veterans um, video that he did, which was fabulous. Yeah, we ran that along with our virtual Memorial Day parade. So, of course, we put his first because it was just marvelous. Yeah, we yeah. We created a virtual, uh, uh, like, a, like a parade uh, with speeches, and it, it was wonderful. It was well received. Oh, that's great. Now, that's how many nice employees... How many employees do you have, or is it just you? It's just me. Um, we have Jack Cunningham, who you're probably familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, he just graduated from Emerson, did his four years and three years, and uh, he was also doing two internships, plus trying to cover meetings for me uh, virtually. Wow. So uh, he's graduated. He's finished his two uh, internships. So he's here part-time for us. Um, and it, it just it really comes in handy because we're blowing up with um, editing all the sporting events that are. Mm. Do you the air edits. 24 hours? No, no. Well, we are. We, so we have a community bulletin board, uh, which is events that are going on. People can send us uh, generally in a, in a PNG or a JPEG. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Okay. So. We, uh, we place that on our bulletin board between programming. So if a show is 23 minutes, the last seven minutes is bulletin board with music that we have on a little tiny uh, iPod. Uh, we have holiday music that we switch to. And, uh, so how does somebody submit something to that? Uh, they can send it to uh, Don at 143tv.org. Okay. Just in a J, like, do they need to have it? Um, is it just strictly information or? Yeah, so at times we'll get too much information. It's yeah. like an entire book yeah. um, can't be read uh, on a television screen. So we just ask for bullet points, um, you know, get to the point and the five basic uh, lines of information. And, and if they want more information, go to your website. Um, okay. So that's. We, we're glad to do that. You know, we like to populate, uh, you know, advertise events sometimes so people are aware of it. They know to turn to us for, for advice. Oh, that's super good to know. I don't know if the library does that frequently, do we? I don't know. You did in the past, um, but I would love to see it again. So yeah, you should be advertising cake. I, yeah. Oh, you're going to be hearing a lot from me. Yeah. Good. I like no it. No kidding. Great. And I also noticed on, on your website, you have a board of directors and things too. I know I interviewed um, Corey Evans, right? Um, select person Corey Evans. So what do they do? What sort of role do they play? Okay, they're a, a, a complete volunteer board. Uh, Corey's the president, of course. Uh, he does have some TV background, uh, production background. So it's wonderful to have uh, people with skills that are at least relatable. Uh, we have Peter Richardson, who's our treasurer. Uh, he's been in independent business before, so he really understands, uh, it, he also understands marketing. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to market ourselves a lot better. The same questions you're asking us, other people are surprised to know that we're even here. Um, and you know that's our fault, it's my fault, but we just seem to, run from one fire to the next. That's our <laughs> job. Um, we're, we have a highly technical system with seven go live locations throughout the town. Oh. Operational, there's seven points of failure that we 
have to consider. Wait, what do you mean seven go live points? We have town hall, school yep. committee room. Those okay. are robotic cameras, uh, the senior center. We can go live from the gym the, at the high school, uh, the emergency management center at the Deer mm. Hill, uh, the auditorium here at the high school. Okay. So our studio is a go live location. So um, each one has their own contact points and connections. And we have to set up through a server when they air, when they shut off. Um, so there's a lot to it. So when we're operating with that, uh, you know, a lot could go wrong. So we're usually, and we also have a Pixelot system. Anybody that's not familiar with that, we have a robotic camera in the gym and on the high school field. It's a special camera with four lenses that was designed in the Netherlands. To, uh, it's got an algorithm that follows speed, distance, height, and the sport. So we tell the camera or, or the system that it's going to be boys football at 6 p.m. versus Abington. At 6 p.m. it goes live and um, the camera follows, there's no person operating it. It just That's follows the action. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. Um, so, but we've had a lot of issues with it technically. <laughs> I imagine. Uh, we have an old scoreboard and it doesn't quite match up so many times we're last minute trying to get our scoreboard functionality working. Um, mm. but it's, it's, a, it's an amazing system, but it's something that keeps me up at night. Yeah. So I'm yeah. glad Jack is back and I'm glad that we have a board of directors who are extremely helpful and extremely, uh, oh, they're patient and they listen to me sometimes. You know, I, I don't whine a lot, but when I do, it's nice to have a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> So our, our, our board is very good at that. <laughs> oh my God. And I saw that you're also, you're just asking for volunteers. Yeah, I, it, this is especially good. I, we think business owners should really take advantage, especially during the pandemic. Mm. They can do outreach. They could do public service announcements. They can be a part of, uh, Chris Sr. Uh, has his own show, uh, Cohasset Common. Mm -hmm. We generally have three or four segments per episode, and it could be a Zoom interview. Uh, we go on location sometimes uh, to interview, especially uh, well, Mary Goodwin is a, is a good person we, we like to talk with um, mm -hmm. in vaccines. And uh, we also speak with uh, Pat, Pat Sullivan quite a bit. Um, updates of the school because it seems every two weeks there's some new policy in place. So it's yep. nice up to date with that. Uh, we follow local business leaders, you know, how are they transitioning uh, during this time? And, and so they can get their name out there, but we're only one person. It's hard to follow 88 different businesses and to get them to respond. So if they could film things on a phone if they wanted to and send us the videos, We'll put the finishing touches on it and we'll give them a time slot. Oh, that's fabulous to know. And I have to say, you are very accessible and generous with your time. So very easy to connect with. That's good to hear. You know, we want to be that way. Yeah. We're, it, it sounds hokey, but we're really here for the community. We, we want the community to take advantage of this. We, we don't want to do all the work ourselves. So. Right. I think the major um, drawback is to bring attention to yourself is where you're located on the, you know, on the TV dial. I know right. I'm usually in the 800s and every now and then I'll think, oh, wait, what's going on locally? Well, do, don't worry. We're, we're coming up with a marketing campaign that Good. you'll pick of in no time. Good. Yeah. Because yeah. there's nothing I like better, too, than just sitting back and watching a selectman's meeting or something. Nothing puts me to sleep faster. But I tend to <laughs> don't tell him I said that. All right. It's just between us. Yeah, no, no, we'll keep it between us. Yeah. 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 But, um, but, you know, I frequently forget that it's on. So, yeah, your marketing campaign will help my sleep a lot. <laughs> Good. We look forward to it. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I learned a lot. This is really interesting. And um, I am definitely going to encourage the library staff to submit things. 
our Please programming. Do. We have so much programming right now that's online, but sooner than later, we are going to be starting um, opening the doors very gradually, appointment only, but I think this would be a great way too to, to start promoting that. Well, good. Invite us over with a camera and we can do your grand opening. Oh, yeah, you should. <laughs> but only one person at a time. No, okay. <laughs> it won't be the most lively presentation, but hey, it's something. It, it's a start, right? It's a start. All right. Well, I want to say thank you so much. Um, I really enjoyed me. this. And I'm probably going to have you on again because oh, I love it. Yeah. You're thank fun you. to talk to. <laughs> All right. Too. <laughs> Take Bye -bye. care. Bye. Bye-bye now.